Vintage Remington Typewriter Models, Value and Price Guide The Remington typewriters are among our favorite old typewriters. They are beautiful and priceless because of their long histories. It's always a good idea to get a vintage typewriter, no matter your motivations. So, do you have a vintage Remington typewriter rusting away in your basement? Are you looking for an old-school writing experience or perhaps a lover of a vintage typewriter for decor? In this blog post, we will walk through the models of the Remington typewriter, its history, and what it's worth. Please keep reading to learn more. The Remington Typewriter Company Story Eliphalet Remington II, 23 at the time, forged his first rifle barrel in August 1816. The young gunsmith's first attempt would turn out to be a milestone, and he continued to create sporting rifles. Eliphalet's oldest son Philo Remington and his second son Samuel joined the company in 1839 and 1845, respectively, and later his third son, renaming it E. Remington and Sons, in the process. Aside from the rifles being cheap, they were also of high quality. The Remington business continued to flourish as they created other rifle parts like trigger guards, butt plates, percussion locks, etc. Then, they focused on producing long arms and revolvers after 1846. Finally, in 1856, they delved into the production of agricultural implements. After Eliphalet Remington passed away in 1861, his son Philo took up the position of managing the business. A few years after, Christopher Scholes, Samuel W. Soul, and Carlos S. Glidden created the first commercially successful typewriter. They patented their creation on June 23, 1868, and named it Scholes and Glidden Typewriter. In March 1873, E. Remington began manufacturing its first typewriter in New York, USA. It's also the first keyboard with a QWERTY layout. During the Civil War, they expanded the product line by incorporating typewriters and sewing machines, 1870 to 1894, all of which were displayed at the Philadelphia Fairgrounds in 1876. The company would later be a significant rifle supplier to the U.S. Army during World War II. Standard Typewriter Manufacturing Company. Later, the business produced the No. 2 typewriter with the shift, key and colors. In 1886, Standard Typewriter Manufacturing Company purchased the typewriter company from E. Remington & Sons. As a result, the Remington name. On June 30, 1955, Remington Rand Incorporated and the Sperry Corporation merged to form the Sperry Rand Corporation under the laws of Delaware. On August 1, 1979, Sperry Rand changed its name to Sperry Corporation. Furthermore, on September 16, 1986, Sperry and Burroughs Corporation combined. The Unisys Corporation replaced Burroughs as the name of the remaining corporate entity. The new owners converted the company to Remington Typewriter Company in 1902. Remington Rand. The Rand Cardex Bureau Incorporated, which had created the Cardex, the Rand Ledger, and a variety of other office record management systems, and Remington merged in 1927. So when the Standard Typewriter Manufacturing Company formed a merger with the Rand Cardex Bureau, the Remington name then likewise changed to Remington Rand in. James H. Rand, Jr. Transformed Remington Rand into the most prominent American office and commercial equipment manufacturer. As a result, they recorded a huge market success in the typewriter business. In 1955, Sperry Corporation acquired the Remington Rand. Also, Mark Twain, who reportedly used a Remington typewriter, was the first author to submit a typewritten book manuscript. The Standard Typewriter rebranded to Remington Typewriter Company in 1902 to reflect its new acquisition's renown. Choosing the Remington name as their business increased customers' trust in their whole product range, even though they had purchased the right to keep using the name. There are currently too many different Remington Typewriter models to count. However, they offer distinctive features and varying sizes. Some Earliest Models of Remington Typewriters Remington and Sons produced different typewriters between 1868 and 1886 before Standard Typewriter Manufacturing bought the business. 
they included a variety of qualities, including noiseless typewriters and electric, standard, and portable typewriters. While it is not possible to highlight all the models of the Remington typewriters, below are some of the models. Remington Model 1 The first Remington machine as the company began to manufacture typewriters was the Model 1. This first typing machine from the Remington Company began in 1873 and then discontinued production in 1878. So, it is as vintage as you can imagine. The Remington Model 1 was a modified version of the Scholl and Glidden typewriter that only wrote capital letters. In addition, it had a lid to keep it safe when not in use. It was huge and had its keyboard in the QWERTY layout, just like modern computers. Remington Model 2 the Remington Model 2, created in 1878 in New York, stood out from the Model 1 in size and shape. Also, the shift key introduced with the machine was one of its striking features, differentiating it from the first Remington typewriter. This typewriter worked well and was pretty simple to operate. It was a typewriter with an understroke. You must lift the hinged carriage and look at the bottom of the platen to see your typed work. It is also the first Remington model to have an upper and lower case letter. The Remington Model 2 was stunning and, in the opinion of vintage typewriters, paved the way for further advancements in the sector. Remington Standard No. The Remington Models 3 and 4 were experimental machines. Unfortunately, as a result, they were not placed in the market. One of the most challenging Remington Standard models to locate is the understroke No. 5 Typewriter. There are various claims that this model was specifically for the UK market, although there isn't much information available. The explanation is that it could fit the much broader paper widely used in England. But the machine did record market success. According to reports, this model encountered consumer resistance mostly because it didn't resemble conventional typewriters. Meanwhile, this model's beauty is what draws everyone to it. Remington Standard No. A milestone in the Remington industry was the Remington Standard Model No. 6. Its spacing mechanism, paper carriage, and cylinder showed significant advancements over earlier machines. George B. Webb, a Remington mechanic, is credited by the National Museum of American History with making these improvements. This vintage Remington typewriter model, manufactured in 1895, is a remarkable object. It is lovely, helpful, and exudes vintage typewriter style wherever it goes. In addition, it serves as a symbol of progress. Remington Standard No. The number of keys greatly differs between this model and the typical number 6. This typewriter has 42 keys, not the typical 38. It subsequently outsold the standard number 6 and is one of the vintage Remington blind typewriters that are most popular today. All the positive qualities of Standard No. 6 are there in the Remington Standard No. 7, plus more. As a result, it is both a worthwhile investment and a great purchase. One of the best vintage Remington Company typewriters is this Remington Standard Model No. 7 design. Other models of the Remington typewriter. By the turn of 1900, after recording huge market success with the first typewriters, the Remington Typewriter Company continued to manufacture other models. Meanwhile, in 1930, Remington Rand went on to develop Remington Portable Typewriters. Below are some of the valuable models. Remington Jr. The Remington Jr., created in 1914 by the Remington Company, was a short-lived model, succeeding other models, such as the Remington Models 3 through 9 and the Remington Standard Variations produced. Smith Plant Premiers in Syracuse, New York, produced Remington Jr. When compared to earlier Remington models, this one was smaller and lighter. However, some detractors claim that while it is portable, it is not without some difficulty. The location of the ribbon spool behind the carriage in a vertical, Side-by-side -side arrangement is one of the most noticeable features of this machine. Another peculiar arrangement is the spring drum, which is perpendicular to the carriage and has a cable running from the carriage along a pulley. Finally, the spring tensioner is the component that resembles a daisy with a winding key. Nevertheless, unlike some other machines from Remington, this model did not perform as well on the market. 
A. That could have been caused by World War I, which broke out on July 28, 1914, and lasted for four years. So here it is if you want a vintage typewriter to honor World War I. Remington Portable Model No. The 1920 release of the Remington Portable No. 1 is distinctive in that it underwent multiple production-related modifications. As a result, it allows collectors to buy various iterations of the same model. The earliest models have a curved paper table, while subsequent ones came in the form of a flatbed. The No. 1 is a very simple model for a beginner typewriter collector to find because the Remington Company produced over a thousand units of the machine. Approximately 600,000 of the Remington Portable Model 1 typewriters were sold between 1920 and 1925, making it easy to find one. But it can be challenging to find the first version with all the original specifications. The No. 1 Portable was the first actual Remington Portable typewriter because it didn't need to use any special techniques to make itself smaller. Its pop-up type bars, which lift for use by a side lever and lay back flat for storage, are one of the most inventive features. By the turn of the 1930s, Remington Rand Model 1 came into existence and also stole the market with its unique features. Of course, your vintage typewriter model's collection cannot be complete without Remington Rand M0 Dell 1 Portable. Remington Rand Model 5 Deluxe Possibly one of the most beautiful machines in history is the Model 5 Remington typewriter produced between 1940 and 1947 by Remington Rand in New York. Its rounded, modernist appearance has stood the test of time and is a favorite among collectors of vintage writing machines. The machine comes in gloss or matte finishes, with black or chrome key tops. Accent keys are occasionally red, and the margin rulers can be either black or red. Instead of a tab setting, it has an automatic start key, a carriage shift, fine metal ribbon spools, and attractive metal stamped ruler. Remington Noiseless Typewriter Models Remington acquired the Noiseless Typewriter Company in 1924. Remington first introduced its Noiseless Portable in 1931, and many years after that, different Noiseless machines were a part of Remington's extensive line of portables. These noiseless replacement machines have four banks and rubber platens that type more clearly. These high-quality typewriters did remarkably well on the market, demonstrating that consumers were ready to trade some portability for ease and more excellent quality. Remington Noiseless Portable Typewriter This Remington Noiseless Typewriter was among the best-looking and most popular models. Its defining design element is the rounded panel above the keyboard, emphasized with a horizontal ridge that forms a stylish V at its very front. Later specimens carry the Remington that weigh on the paper table below the spacebar, whereas earlier specimens are marked Remington Noiseless Portable below the spacebar. Earlier models, including the Model 7, also had black plastic keys. However, subsequent models have keys with glass tops. These elaborate leather cases with drawers for stationery and supplies may accompany these fancy colored machines. The back spacer and margin release keys occasionally stick out from the plate behind the keyboard, adding two more keys to the keyboard. These machines appear in Europe. They were probably created by Remington for export so that they could support accents and other symbols for languages spoken in Europe. Monarch and Smith Premier Noiseless are alternative names. Remington Noiseless Typewriter Model 7. These elaborate, leather-covered bags with drawers for stationery and supplies may accompany these fancy-colored machines. The back spacer and margin release keys occasionally stick out from the plate behind the keyboard, adding two more keys to the keyboard. They were probably created by Remington for export so that they could support accents and other symbols for languages spoken in Europe. The larger sibling of the Noiseless Portable, the Model 7, includes a full-sized paper table, a tabulator, black plastic key tops. A carriage return lever is long and horizontal rather than short and vertical. It cost $105 at launch, but by 1935 it had dropped to $73. 50. Later, in 1940, the cost was $70. 75 in cash or $75. 75 over 2 payments. 
Also, they implemented the line spacing in July 1933. In addition, some early specimens stand around 1 cm taller because their feet are larger than those of later examples. Other minor differences between early and later machines include smaller, more rounded spacebars and a less complex paper holder in front of the platen. In addition, they can come in cases with a leather strap to hold the typewriter. What is the value of your vintage Remington typewriter? Knowing the cost of various Remington typewriters is crucial. First, it assists relative cost by helping ensure you don't overpay for inferior goods and informs your buying decision. It also enables you to see the value of what you already own. In general, the value of a typewriter increases as they get older. So newer versions have less value because they are simple to get at vintage stores and other places where they sell secondhand goods. Because of that, any machine produced between the 1960s and 1990s doesn't command high prices. However, typewriters produced during World War II are extremely rare but expensive due to their historical value. Unfortunately, assigning a precise value to vintage can be a hassle when you encounter a vintage. However, if you are new in the typewriter business, note that the following factors can help determine a typewriter's worth. Flexibility, convenience sells well. A portable and lighter Remington typewriter will typically be more valuable than a big, heavy one. Few people enjoy the strain of occasionally lifting giant typewriters. Even though the portable machine can eventually type and look better. Desktops are also heavier, take up more space, and are generally restricted to a desk. You're usually much better off attempting to sell a desk model locally because it is also more difficult and expensive to ship. Furthermore, portables sold separately from their carrying cases are worth less than the same model when it comes with the case. Typeface, although most typewriters utilize a standard typeface, there is a larger market for machines with unique fonts. Condition, finding a vintage Remington typewriter can be daunting, but locating one in good condition is more arduous. Therefore, old Remington typewriters are the most expensive and have the most admirable looks. Therefore, you can look for paint blemishes, broken or missing parts, etc. While determining the value of an old Remington typewriter. Repairing and maintaining the typewriter is a common way for dealers to raise its price. Age, as you already guessed, the more vintage the typewriter, the higher its value. For example, the earliest, the 1870s, Remington typewriters are more expensive than later, the 1950s, versions. We will look at how to identify your Remington typewriter production year in the following section. Furthermore, another way to determine the value of your vintage typewriter is by inspecting the prices of old listings, so comparing the prices of machines sold before with the ones you already can give you insights into the best price tag. Also, even though you are not a seller and only want to add to your vintage machine collection, checking the value 0F previously sold Remingtons can help with bargaining. For example, a seller recently listed a Remington Rand Model 5 on eBay for slightly over $400. Meanwhile, there are reports that a Remington No. 1 sold in 2014 for about $27,000. In light of these facts, it is crystal clear that your vintage Remington typewriters can fetch you some real money. How to date your vintage Remington typewriter? Even though vintage typewriters are notorious for having irregular forms and figures, it may be difficult to identify them. Because of this, it is better to utilize the typewriter's serial number to estimate its age. Assess the inside frame of the typewriter by lifting the ribbon cover. Additionally, you should shift the carriage and carefully inspect the region that is accessible. Finally, check the bottom of the machine if none of these places yield the serial number. The slotted portion may also have the serial number on it. You can only find the serial number for these vintage typewriters if you conduct a comprehensive investigation. With the aid of the typewriter database, you may date your machine using the serial number. Where can you buy or sell vintage Remington typewriter? If you have finally decided to join the typewriter business, then a marketplace should never be your problem. Whether you are a collector or one of the business's sellers, there are many markets for you to explore. Below are a few of them. Online Auction Store Online is the easiest and fastest place to begin your collector or seller journey. 
As a collector, you can do a quick online search of the particular Remington model you want to buy. On the other hand, sellers can take clear pictures and descriptions of their items and post them on online marketplaces. However, you must ascertain the machine's condition and description when buying online. For example, is it a functional, bad, or unspecified condition? Are you picking it up or paying for shipping? All these questions should receive answers when purchasing online. The following are examples of online shops and auction stores that list vintage typewriters. Garage sale and flea markets. Another perfect place to find and sell collectibles is in garage sales and flea markets. All you have to do is look for the nearest garage sale or flea market, then get prepared to go shopping because one man's old Remington typewriter can become your treasure. Speaking of physical places to get vintage Remington Rand typewriters, you can also check out vintage shops in your region. The treasure you seek may be in any of these places. Bottom line. Having a vintage Remington typewriter is a pleasure, whether you desire it for its style, brand name, decor, or personal use. On the other hand, they can also count as valuable assets because they will probably increase in value over time. However, in other not to get beaten by the market, it is essential to consider some crucial factors before embarking on that journey. Therefore, you must not take just any Remington typewriter presented as vintage. So you should inspect the machine's age, condition, and other vital things mentioned above. Congratulations on the new addition to your collections after putting everything discussed in this post into practice.